then Namsha has to come out against like most likely Kua. That's going to be very difficult. Kua is extremely good, and that will probably put Liquid into the driver's seat. So yeah, if Max Pax could get the 2-0, that's probably the best chance Sidestorm we're going to have in this playoff matchup. Clem has been playing great as of late. He's our Terran player from Liquid coming in in this series. We'll get this all started up. The barracks will go down. A gateway coming on the other side. Probe getting set up for the first few moments of this one. We're going to look to see how things are going to go. As the probe heads out onto the map for a couple of moments. Get this ready to roll. Yo, twice dead. How's it going? Thank you so much for the 44 month resub on the Prime. As I'm just taking a moment to get ready on this. Equilibrium's the opening map of the best of two, which is a pretty big deal because that should give Max Packs an edge in map one at least. Equilibrium is definitely one of the more Protossy maps. It's a good base setup. You've got a gold you can utilize, which is exactly what Max Packs dives straight towards here. And now I'm excited to see what Clem's answer to the gold base may be. How aggressive does he get? He is already double gassing. So we'll at least have a faster factory to be aggressive off of. Like I say, we'll see if we can do anything about the gold or not across the course of this game. Get this underways here. Reaper is on the way up. The factory coming through. Nexus and the Cybercore coming in on the other side. For the moment as we get all ready. Again, that Cybercore and the Nexus building up for the moment here. How much better are gold minerals than regular? Huge. Gold minerals are bonkers. You can carry seven uh, minerals at a time instead of five with uh, gold, so about 40% better. Oh, there's, there's less patches here, so you, the main thing is you, you start getting income, each worker starts mining more, more quickly. At the end of the day, you usually end up on the same amount of income because you can't get as many workers working. So you can't get as many workers working. If you can't get as many workers working, then the same... It, it, so what I'm trying to say is it's more about the boost that it gives you, the speed at which you start mining, which is pretty you know, significant per probe initially. So that's a factor. As Clem is already starting to move forwards, Cyclone, a couple of Marines, a long map. So it's a long way to get across to the other side and to really put further pressure on here. So... Keep our eyes on that and see how that goes. The Cyclone Marines not going to go too far on their own, apparently just going to stop steady for the moment. The first Oracle on the way up from Max Pax, and that's going to be his opening tech choice. How good is an Oracle going to be defensively against a Cyclone Marine push, though, if we do commit with the Medivac, two Cyclones, a group of Marines? I can actually see Max Pax being in a little bit of trouble here. I also wonder, I mean, do we aim for the gold base of the push? I would guess so, because it's closer to push into as the Terran, so reinforce to as well. This first Oracle's going to be nowhere near it. My only question is, if you're expecting an attack on the Gold's Max Packs, maybe then Clem attacking on the main base would be more interesting. He sent uh, the Reaper up into the main base. He's going to just harass over there at the Reaper, try and take attention there. Well, again, the main push is going to come at the Gold base, and you know what? That is an unbuilt uh, uh, second pylon there. I thought that was the battery, actually, but no, it's just another pylon. Probes are going to pull in. The Oracle does go for a couple of SEVs. This is going to be an Adept that absolutely cannot survive. Super Battery will pop, so now the Adept actually will survive. Okay, Cyclones might want to retarget. Oh my god, the Adept moved out of uh, uh, recharge range, out of that battery range. Now you can start picking through a pylon. Super Battery buying you a lot of time right now. Boy, do you need it. Stalkers warp in. This is what we've been waiting on, but the first Stalker going to go down extremely quickly as probes pull forward. Cyclones are so much better against probes than they used to be with that faster relock on uh, range. Grrr, beautiful pickup from Clan. Beautiful pickup again as the Stalker shots fly towards that Cyclone. He dodges each and every one of them, and Clem getting on top of the gold on a map that Max Pax probably would have picked if he'd not played this first and then lost the first game. Clem is currently dominating, and he is just going to keep on going. The Cyclone Micro has been insane. He keeps on dodging. Finally, he loses one. Now he loses two. The hype disappears as I get excited. That was a ridiculous amount of successful dodges, though, and that provided so much value for Clem. Who is running out of steam a little bit here. Look at those stalkers also kept alive on such low HP. Max Pax also 
doing his absolute best to make sure he keeps everything alive he can. Every single Stalker will count following up from here, whether they're bruised or battered or whatnot. Once they have Blink, they can continue to stay alive and find value, so important to keep four of those Stalkers alive on low HP. That gives him an opportunity as well, as Clem backs away. Max Pack survives. Uh, obviously, work accounts kind of even out, which typically is good for a Terran. Proz usually wants to be ahead, but of course, in this case, the Proz still has a gold base. Right now, the big thing is that the tech initially in this game, as a Liberator shows up to deny some mining on the picture-in-picture, the tech in this game was initially Stargate, so you don't have Blink for a while as Max Pack, so Clem has a lot of time to stabilize. The four Stalkers are really at their peak potential in terms of getting out there and dealing more damage. So I would say overall, this is looking very good for Clem. His attack on that gold did a lot, slowed Max Pax down heavily, and Max Pax, yeah, I, I mean, like I say, he's going to be supported and boosted by the gold base right now. These Stalkers will fight this Liberator. This is a long process, by the way, my goodness. We actually do not succeed with that. Those two Stalkers are going to need support. This is all attention and warpings going back over to that main, so this Liberator finds a lot of value. Oh my goodness, if this Liberator actually gets away, that's so big as well. Okay, there's a Phoenix that will come chase it down. I mean, if the Liberator got out alive, that would have been huge. Get back home, repair, come back once more. That would have been actually crazy. Actually crazy. We'll get called. The Phoenix is going to go and take it off. And the Phoenix is going to sacrifice itself as the Medivac comes hunting. And the Cyclones will get the kill on that. So nice catch from Clem as well. So he's able to get that. At least a little bit of revenge for his Liberator. Gets rid of the Phoenix and any potential use it might have found the deeper into this game we dove. Stim pack combat shield and plus one all coming up. That's going to be Clem's power spike here as Max Pax gets his first blink into the main right now. I actually don't think you want to commit to that. I saw the two tanks siege. Obviously, Max Pax sees it with the hallucination. You blink into that, you're a goner. So he very much so knew what was about to happen there. He did not commit to it. That's the correct choice. That is the correct call. Very nicely done. Plus one attack and the combat shield still coming about. We're going to see an extra depth warping in on the bottom side as well. Stalker still moving out to the top. Bio tank, Raven joining up as well. Also getting settled here. And there's Conquest of Shells and plus one attack upgrade continue through. We just move forward. Those siege tanks get up. The stalkers get pushed away. Yo, just gonna continue to go push back over the center. Stalkers take some hits again. Some damage being done. Just have ourselves a bio pushing away. The stalkers taking a lot of damage. Uh, continuing around. The tanks continue to get settled as well here. It's going to continue through. I mean, this is going to be a massive push with bio upgrades completed. Max Pax has no tech to really rely on. He's going to be relying on DTs as a follow-up. He kind of knew he was behind. He needed something desperate. And uh, desperation is the DT's middle name. As in this case, they are going to try and do something, but they need to work miracles at this point. Max Pax loses his gold. There's no reason for Clem not to continue. Uh, he's already reinforced with two medivacs of units. Stalkers try and come in from the other direction. They get a medivac. Max Pax is micro good to just capitalize on any moment he possibly can, but you're still asking for a lot more than is realistic at this stage. This is not looking pretty at all for Max Pax. As the bio will stand by one tank went down that was in the front, but the other two are supporting. And here come the two additional medivacs of units that are just going to be the absolute game enders on this one. These few zelts are still charging through. You're still trying to get to the front here. The bio pushes this back. The stalkers get chased away. We still continue forwards. Another stalker from the other side is not going to be too successful. GG is called. Clem is going to take game number one of this best of two. Huge for Clem. Huge for Liquid. And then realistically, you have as max packs, you would have to 2-0 Clem and probably 2-0 Cure before you get to like evening out the series again, right? Unless Namshaw was to cause an upset along the way. Fair to say that that is most likely unrealistic. Clem is in the bottom left of Hecate. While in the top right, it is going to be Max Pax.
get this one up and rolling. Barracks coming through, gateway coming out, and get all of this set up for the first few moments. Just going to be seeing our probe and our SCV on the way from both players here. Get settled. So he chases our probe about for a few moments. Hex is going down. Cybercore continues up. We've seen a couple of SCVs still going after that probe. So again, looking to try and find just a little bit more damage here. is also coming through. We'll see what uh, Max Pax would like to try and do in terms of early builds. Feels like the early game is so important for Max Pax versus Clem. You, uh, I feel like lately, if Max Pax doesn't get something of a crazy edge in the early game, I feel like Clem has been pretty darn good at securing series and matches against him. So, I feel like that's uh, maybe one thing for us to be looking at here is, and the factory's about halfway done, the CC's coming up, Marine and SCV still building through as well. Stargate building. And the Adept just trying to see a little bit more of what is going on. The Marines will head back to a bunker. Head into a little bit of safety for the moment. Ah! Yeah, Adept gets in the back here, and this is always just that kind of an early, you know, early on, you know, annoyance that Max Fax can provide. He absolutely loves doing that. SCV's pulling back just a little bit. And the Adept going to go in for one more SCV there as well. It's just going to be able to grab that. Keep coming around. The Marine will still take some further bits of damage. Again, we just have ourselves the Phoenix and the Adept continuing through for the moment. Well, this Adept is going to be able to grab the Reaper. So Reaper will go down as well. Just going to nab that straight away. Medivac still on the way out. A couple of Marines coming through. The Widow Mine is building as well. Another assimilator just comes over onto the natural, so we get that on the go too. And again, Cyclone, Medivac, a couple more Marines all coming out. A little bit of everything being established. Just a moment. Well, obviously with the peaceful early game, inside of a little bit of a depth harass and Italian running around, doesn't mean that you can kind of see where we're going. As the Phoenix continue to build up, we are seeing a robo facility produced. That sends us towards the idea of Phoenix Colossus that has to instantly be on our minds as this is the opening setup. So, yeah, we, we kind of think about that already just a little bit. Still seeing the Viking and the Cyclone coming around, the few Marines coming up, a couple of Adepts coming over as well. Phoenix Gathering, Stalker on the way for the moment. Bio push is going to come across, and it's going to hit at this sort of timing where there isn't too much to play with as Max Packs. We attempt to go deny the third. You're going to utilize these Widow Mines to help zone, and then that's going to allow you to, as Clem, maybe even, you know, like I say, pick through that third base. The Phoenix decide to go pick off reinforcements. They run into a Cyclone and a couple of Marines here, which wouldn't, uh, would have been great for them if they hadn't just kind of run through initially. Widow Mine now goes off. What can we do? One of the Widow Mine going to get brought to the back, using the Medivac to try and make sure it got there successfully. He just continues to come around. Stalkers and the Immortal pushing forward. Needs to be careful with those uh, Stalkers and the Widow Mine. The last thing you want is the Widow Mine to get a, a better connection than it needs to be getting. 
Plus one attack and stem back coming through. Combat shield is also coming up right now. Phoenix will go for four SCVs. Five SCVs in total. I think good for Max Packs, right? He didn't really take too much damage overall. He got away, he got out of this, and meanwhile, Clem is the one that actually ended up taking more damage than anybody here, so that definitely adds up for sure. Phoenix come back over around toward the main base. Now they're just going to dive in. The Viking firing up and Marines shooting. This Medivac dives in toward the main as well. Sun of Thunderland's coming up. Twilight Council on the Forge still coming through. And they still make their way around the far right-hand side of the map here currently. So again, just on a little bit of a journey around the Marines, the Medivac, and come back across as well. Still seeing charge, extended thermal lands, etc. being brought into play. Cycle locks on. The uh, Phoenix gets shoved back pretty quickly there. Axe builds into a lot more gates. Colossus on the way through, obviously number three right now. Sound Thermal Lance might be done too, so they really are hitting their absolute peak at the moment. Next continue coming about, just going to be seeing the Stalkers on the way around, and we just have ourselves Concussive Shells building. Clamor is on all of his bio upgrades, not going to do anything too spicy. He's going to set up a Widow Mind drop. Doesn't look like he's ready to dive into. I mean, why would you dive into three Colossi is the question. You can position, you can posture, but actually committing to anything is going to be kind of tough from here. He's adding on two more barracks, currently only on the two bases, of course, set up. And as we do start a pressure on it in just a little bit. I should be intending to take a third base during this. He's got the SCV count to go for it, so I just expect that to move in position. The Widow Mine's blowing up, and five probes have gone down. Again, Clem also just using this attack on one side to kind of make up for the Widow Mine drop on the left, give it some opportunities. There's the third moving into position. The Viking's just going to fight a Phoenix. One Phoenix for a Viking, I think Clem's kind of okay with. That actually is not too bad of a trade for him, honestly. That could have been a whole lot worse. That's like going to come moving back out, and we are just going to be seeing Clem up to run away. I mean, that again is the expected uh, outcome of that one. There's not really too much surprising about it. So, yeah, no surprises there. Being forced back in that situation is, like I say, kind of just the expectation. Uh, Colossi, Archons, and Stalkers coming back around. And we are going to start pushing up this ramp. Wooden Mine is going to go for the leading Zealot, so we take that out with immediate effect. Colossi shot's going to start breaking through. We are going to have ourselves the Clem army is going to come pushing across here. A lot of army supply from Clem. Almost felt like he could keep chasing. I understand he doesn't want to because it feels bad attacking into Colossi and they continue to get shot after shot off. It feels like you're inviting them to just take so much value in the situation. Viking Marine Marauder all coming through as well. As these stalkers will go and they will pick off this Widow Mine. A couple more shots coming out. The Colossus actually begins to recall back one more time. Just going to get out of trouble. Still feel like Clem's supply-wise is amazingly set up. I mean, you look at the army supply, 92 to 63. Of course, the Protoss has a lot of tech in their army, and oftentimes that makes up for the supply difference. So it's not a number to be taken at face value, to say the least. Army's still just collecting out at the front for the moment. As we see, a couple, well, another Viking, a little bit of Marine Marauder coming out. Fire coming through, a couple of Zealots already being shot down there. A couple of other Archons continue to move around as well, so still on the move for a little bit. This army coming around the top, in we go. 
see the Vikings firing. Colossus already taking damage. The super battery healing up whatever we can here. Io chasing in from the right hand side. A couple of little shots still going about there. And as we dive forward once again, super battery is going to fade away. The medivacs diving into the main base. Phoenix firing up some shots as well for the moment. Just going to fire through. That goes the Colossus. And all these values continue to drop down. Vikings show up one more time. The Archon's still getting picked away at. The Vikings will chase. Colossus being hunted all the way back for the moment. The Vikings landing. Another Stalker goes down. The Warp Gate will get picked away at two. So just going to get rid of that right now. Clem's position here is still being, you know, benefited from because the units on the right side are dealing damage. All these wooden mines are coming off cooldown. If they get to fire a second time, we always say it. A wooden mine that fires twice is very nice. Uh, you, uh, that's not actually the same, but it rhymes, so it felt good. But, I mean, the value out of a second Widow Mine shot, you expect Widow Mines to die a lot of the time, right? The units that are expected to fall down. Uh, and so if they get a fire a second time, it's such a big deal. As Prism goes down, Micro is going to be lost, but so will the Viking count, so the Colossi may be safer than they were previously. Fire fighting is going down. Now we have the Observer. Finally, Wooden Mines are getting cleaned out. No more shots from those then. And uh, Clem's position here is completely broken through. Clem works around to the right side. Both these players are rocking the full base setup at the moment. As there's obviously Clem dictating some of these fights and some of these battles. Fighting in here, we had a couple of Wooden Mine shots leading the charge into the Zealots. Now we try and push further forward. A little bit of the rest of the bio coming across too. Stalkers have to blink back one more time. Seeing our stalker still moving over, there is one stalker being picked away at immediately. Another one getting blown up by the wood of mine also. The rest of the bio still heading around to the bottom. Just for the moment. And there's a couple of marauders continue to put some damage in. Ghost coming up, the CC on the way, starport building. Double CC on the way, in fact. And Dark Shrine coming up, the Disrupt and the Colossus all building through as well. Well, Zellas are going to charge forward, going to go in towards the Missile Turret, and EMP goes down, that's going to connect on a bunch of those Zealots right away, and... Well, we we'll just dealing with those counterattacks. Tell you what, it feels like we've not really seen Max Packs really be able to get in across the map with counters and run -bys. That's one thing that Clem has been able to shut down for the most part, which I think is pretty darn important. The more he's able to do that, the better that's going to feel for him overall. I feel like that goes a long way to put him in, into just a better and better position. It just keeps you in such a comfortable spot. Three SCVs do go down. Disruptor, plus three attack upgrade coming through. The Dark Shrine is continuing to build. and Well, the bio again is going to take a few moments to knock through that set of rocks here. It's just going to open that up. Four Vikings and four Marauders all coming in for the moment as well, so let's keep that going. I'm just going to be seeing the bunker is there. Protecting Zelt Stalker still chasing through. Stemming up one more time. Clem pushing to the top. Has to dodge disruptors or try and kill them. Ah, that was actually some okay disruptor shots. He only killed one of them. Clem supply dipping a little bit. Is this continued aggression starting to catch up to him a little? Maybe it is. Max Pack staying maxed out. And Clem, like I say, his supply has just dipped a little bit there. He'll probably max out a game, but it's maybe a sign of things to come. And Clem is having to be the one to chase a remax while Max Pack sits comfortably. That typically means that Max Pack is going to have more money available because he's not having to rebuild while Max, so he's got more time here to set up and build up a bank. That's exactly what he begins to do. Vikings 5-4, that first Colossus in trouble. Observer goes down as well. Vikings going to get rid of both the Colossi quickly. The Colossus on the left is going to be on its own. The Disruptors are being dodged. It's a horrible fight for Max Packs. The two-sided attack was really bad because 
Well, you just saw the Colossi melting one side, then the next. The Disruptors don't hit anything because Clem had all the space in the world to work with. And Max Pax is going to be kicking himself for letting this fight happen because he kind of initiated it. And, uh, yeah, he really lost out. Clem's on the top side as well. This base is exposed as Max Pax has thrown everything defensively on the right-hand side, which means that Clem is going to get a bunch of probes in the base, maybe even. He's probably currently busy kiting back over here as so he's not controlling that army fully on the picture and picture now he's moved it back across towards some more of the probes. Disruptor shots are not close enough to connect as the chase from Max Pax is something that Clem is starting to turn back into. He's feeling as though maybe he can threaten uh, picking up some of those disruptors, right? So, starting to feel okay about that. A couple more marauders, a few more marines, plus two ship weapons, all still coming out. All still on the way in as we dive. Another disruptor goes down, another disruptor just out of reach. Stalkers are being chased down as well. Just for the moment here. Let's see our Shadow Stride coming up. We'll see more lib, more ghost, more tech in general from Clem is only be going to be of aid to him as we see the disruptors here kind of getting caught. They fired a few shots off. They were close enough that maybe, you know, they got a couple connections. But to lose every disruptor is really painful. Clem, supply-wise, is absolutely dominating all of a sudden. It looks as though Clemon is going to be taking himself through to a 2-0. And if he does that, then Team Liquid have taken the driver's seat in this series for certain. Max Pax is going to fall. Clem Team Liquid have their strongest player still out on the table. And yeah, that is an absolutely massive 2-0. That's what it came down to in the regular season. Clem Apex must win 2-0. If he does not 2-0, he and Sci Storm are out of this season. It sets up a Liquid versus Shopify matchup for tomorrow. Max Pax has the work ahead of him. Cut out! No, that was not a phrase. He has the work. He, he has the... <laughs> it's been a long day, okay, guys? I don't know. <laughs> that was not a phrase. Okay, let's just cut that one there. All right. <laughs> He's got a tough road ahead of him. i will just go for that phrase instead. And uh, he is going to be uh, facing a proxy barracks. Not really proxy, but like uh, out on the map barracks to start the game from Clem. As we get this on the go, this probe is moving forward to... Just go and scout is going to see nothing on the low ground initially might be a cause for concern. As we move up into the main base. This moves into the main. Get this on the go. And we just scout around in that main for the moment. Get that all set up. See a little bit of what's going on as our Reaper and our Orbital come up. Next in the Cyber Core coming through as well. Only a few moments here, getting established. Here in game. Number one, obviously, uh, Hecate is the map. This is the map that Max Pax picked against Clem as the loser's pick previously as well, right? So keep that in mind too, that they, they played on this map not that long ago. We go back into it now. Next one, interesting dyna dynamic. You know, you think back to, hey, well, I tried to play Phoenix Colossus on this map. What went wrong? What went right? Well, actually, the initial setup was fine for Max Pax. I think initially he got himself into a good place. It was that fight where he came in from two different sides on the, the kind of center of the map a little bit. Uh, that's where Clem really got the turnaround to make this extremely convincing. Adept is there. Ripley gets pushed back once again, back out in the center. It's going to be seeing the uh, Twilight Council still coming through. Zealot's still coming out to the front as well. And we just have our CC, stop, ward, etc. Going by for the moment. Get set up and go. Reaper gonna fight against the Zealot a few moments. Zealot gonna take a few chips of damage. Cyclone, Medivac, are both on the way right now. We can get those up and running for these early stages. And we just have ourselves the Wooden Mine still sitting in the front as well. All that coming by. I think and the Warp Gate also in production just for now. We got this all on the go, and the Reaper is going to fight against that Zealot for a few moments once again. So again, just trying to find a little bit of something extra here. 
Uh, two Adepts, obviously very scary, and two Adepts shitting on top of the Reaper could be very troublesome, but Line of Sight Blockers maybe would have helped, and obviously we do not chase that. Then as Max Pax decides this is not something he's going to commit further into. A couple of Marines, the Cyclone continuing out. We continue with all of this for the moment here, so just bringing all of that up and running. Still a Reaper out in the center of the map as well. That continues to sit tight for the moment. Uh, so do you see the couple of Depths and the Zealot are going to be there. The Reaper and the Cyclone will start to fight back one more time. And through we go. Just going to be locking on once again. There's going to be another Adept going down. Don't mind shot goes off. Stork is taking a little bit of damage from there. And this is just going to be a push straight into the natural expansion. This is going to be Clem just chasing Max Pax down. Stork is a low... He turns onto those Hurt Stalkers, he could do a lot, he's locked onto the wrong one right now, he'll reset it, and he does get onto the correct one. And Clem is putting in some work. He keeps the Cyclone alive, he's been so good at Micro and Cyclones today, this time he loses it as he goes up to the high ground. Just gonna be seeing the Raven still coming about, the Marine tank still coming through. As we have ourselves, three probes going down as well. Clem's Cyclones have just been so good today, his Micro on the Cyclone specifically is why they've been so good been very very impressive as Clem's micro has just been absolutely top-notch it's kind of ridiculous to watch he is really getting to the absolute pinnacle of Terran micro I think which we always knew he was he was very capable of but he's really putting it all together turrets to help out as we do see little probes across the map going down the raven here will drop an auto turret defensively as well let's just have our prism push back that will not be able to do too much in fact might get stuck in the corner a little six SEVs went down three probes only at least clem you could argue is getting some workers back here that prism getting dangerously close to what is a group of marines and a cyclone but for the moment is getting away with it Impact taking some shots as well. A little bit more damage being done. <clears throat> Cyclone locking on. Just going to be seeing how Stork is taking damage. Marines coming across. Stork is continuing to take some hits. It's going to be seeing one more Stork on that high ground. Gets taken out as well. So that's also going to get picked off. That's going to be seeing Stimpak and Plus One continuing through. Still all of this coming about. Marauder on the way. A few Marines on the way as well. And charge in the forge building up also during all of this right now we just get everything on the go as max Pax gets his tech ready but we're playing a game where max Pax is only four or five workers ahead just about as well like he only just finished up two workers to retake that five worker lead so kind of getting to the point where i feel like clem is in a good eco position you know he's not as far behind in his economy as the pros might like him to be in terms of work count obviously max Pax is re-extending that lead now especially as clem is only just setting up in towards his third he hasn't had to build scvs for a little bit uh, there's a few reasons why that is uh, decent. Plus one in charge, still coming through. The extra gates coming about. Probes are building as well. Get all of this on the go. For the moment. People in the corner coming about also. Just going to be seeing Stimpak, Combat Shield, plus one. Again, a little bit of everything on the way in for now. Uh, so let's jump back into the War Prism. And again, a couple of tanks. Just going to unseage, relocate. Just going to push further forward. A few stalkers will take a few shots of damage there. And yeah, Stimpak Combat Shield and plus one. Are all just building on through. So again, that all set up. A few stalkers already taking some shots once more. So again, damage being done. Now we're going to be having the prism coming around the top side. A lot of turrets going down. A few probes taking some shots. Auto turrets will actually just work on the battery. If you come in again with auto turrets again later, maybe you can finish that battery off. And then that's more of a problem. There's our Viking. Let's go on. It's a little bit of an adventure. Just looking for anything around that top side. It is a large army of Clem that has continued to set up here. 
Let's have ourselves a couple of Zelts. They're really not going to find too much. Clamachi Sims back with the main portion of his force, catches those Zelts, guarantees they go down. That's one of the things that was definitely very apparent in the earlier match they played, that Clem really didn't allow for a lot of Zealot runbys to get too much done. That Viking was so close to the gold mine, finding that prism and shutting it down ahead of time. Instead, it just misses it as now the prism moves forward, the Viking's moving away. That couldn't have played out worse for Clem. As Stalkers might find a cheeky little Raven to uh, kill to open, but it's not enough Stalkers and it's not a sh uh, sh uh, there's not a shot at a second chance there. So only got one volley off. I'm just going to push forward. There is going to be the Prism. This time the Prism might be successful. I don't think Clem is super ready for it. How much damage can he do over here? He anti-armor missiles. Ooh. Interesting choice. Rather than shutting down the Colossus and just taking the Interference Matrix, he says anti-armor missile. I'd rather be able to fight everything more easily. Viking currently cleaning up the Prism. That will not last forever. It's not in warping mode anymore either. You can see that in the picture in picture as the SCVs try and get reset. Clem loses 12 SCVs. Now with the Force Fields gone, will work his way onto this base, and maybe that's why the anti armor missile, because it's lasted long enough for Clem to actually commit to the fight. Max Pax loses the prism, having to focus over here and trying to find something of an engagement. Widowmind's helping protect the salad flank from the right side, and just making sure that this is going to be Clem, who can continue to hold this spot right now. One map is all Clem needs, and Team Liquid are going to tomorrow's playoff day number two to stake on the Shopify Rebellion. Tank sieging up, the bio continues to move on forward. We continue to press around. Just maybe seeing the couple of Colossi coming in. Bio gonna dive forward. First Colossus goes down. We spread, we fight. An immortal gets taken out during this process as well. We've got a siege tank to help a few zelts from the other side as Max Pax tries to find his way to hold. Stalkers are chasing. And Clem is pushed back, but I like the damage he's dealt. He's reset some of the tech units. He's gotten those out of the way. That is a massive win for Clem. Generally, that is just a very good thumbs up kind of uh, gameplay. I think he's got to be very, very happy with this all said and done. Dark Shrine coming up from Max Pax. He will invest into what is the latest stage of this game. Dark Shrine allows you to go into more of that kind of harassing kind of late game setup as the Stalkers do get a little bit of a catch right there. Dark Shrine coming through as well. And continue with that for the moment. Just going to be seeing that bio catching one zealot over on this side. Bio uh, gets reset. Another Viking around the bottom still. Chilling for the moment. Just having Viking going to lift back off into the skies one more time. Let me reset a little bit. A couple more Vikings and Ghosts and all the rest. Gonna start coming through. Let's do attack, observer on the way. Again, the forge and the dark shrine all building up here as well. So a little bit of everything being brought through for the moment. Our bio and our Vikings will come forward. Stalker's gonna be chased down just for the moment as well as we continue to go. A couple of those stalkers being picked off already. That's a lot of uh, water turrets dropping down here and actually going to be able to zone out the Stalker that was chasing the Raven. So, yeah, not really getting too many kills, though. Clem's still sitting on a good chunk of supply bonus for himself at the moment. See the rest of that army once again, just moving back around the top. Vikings, Medivex, all joining together. We re-engage, perhaps, down through into the center of the map now as well. Possibilities abound. Stalkers will take some shots. The Marauders are there to start fighting. Damage being done. Disruptor trying to push forward. We are going to be seeing Disruptor shot trying to come through. Day four was coming up. That was firing. Zealot's being shot at. Again, Robo Facility continue to come into play as well. And dive up this ramp. We are going to be seeing the Vikings in the skies. Obviously, able to zone those colossal max packs. Got a battle against a Max Clem here. Clem that's denied this fourth, uh, this kind of left side location a couple of times. And uh, he's going to be able to do so one more time now. Stalker's getting pushed back. Vikings pulling away. Just going to be seeing the Colossi still firing up a little bit of a storm. 
Garden shield popping, disruptor onto the widow mine again, just doing what we can to clean up house for the moment. Then Clem has to fight through a choke point, which is dangerous, but well, especially if the disruptor finds a connection, but it doesn't. The Colossi now going down, the Vikings putting their jobs into action very beautifully. Not wasting any time themselves. It's going to be seeing the Fusel starting to trail forward. The Stalker Immortal coming through. Another Disruptor shot does find one goes, but generally pretty good splits from Clem. He's not going to allow the bigger connections to happen at all here. Max's supply keeps on dropping. Clem has been so dominant lately, and it looks as though this might continue right now. As another Disruptor shot fires, hits a Marauder. We retake a position in the front. We kill two Disruptors. There goes some of the lifelines of Max Packs being knocked down as we speak. Trying to set up more aggression as the scan comes through. One more disruptor shot, Viking and Marine going down as well. His Nexus is really not far from falling. And just seeing. Well, Clem will keep on trying to fight. He finds what, uh, the reach on one more disruptor there. And again, every disruptor is just one less lifeline that Max has, one less way of buying a few more seconds, buying a little bit more time available to him. And as the Zealots charge through, the Stalkers are going to come with him. The Medivacs have to back away, have to escape out of there. We turn back around, we fight those Zealots once more. The engagement continues through, another Disruptor shot trying to land a Golden Connection, but not happening just yet as our Bio continues in and is going to go after that pylon clearing up house. Next Disruptor shot firing through, but it's also not going to connect on much just yet. Portal taking some hits, the Zealots are going to charge by. Shot plans for the double Marauder. Got it back unloading a few more units here. Dive back up the left hand side. The next is going to be taking some hits. Instant rebuild. <laughs> That's almost like it rebuilt itself when it blew up. But uh, yeah, instant rebuild on the side of Max Fax. He knows he needs it. He knows he, he knew it was going to die, obviously, so he was very aware of that situation. DTs are blinking around, obviously harassed like this is the sort of thing we got to rely on as Max Packs. Hope that it makes Clem make mistakes. Hope that it does something for you here across the course of this. Again, it's coming around. The DTs continue over as well. It's going to drive on forwards again. Clem just seems to be punching one side, punching the other. Dodging disruptor shots as he's going, and he is just being untouchable for a while. High probes going down. I, again, really find it difficult to imagine what we do here as Max Max to turn this around. We got the Colossi coming back across, the Immortal and the Stalkers coming back over. We are killing SCVs, it's just Clem can really afford to lose the SCVs because he's also killing probes himself. So he's doing just as much damage as he's dealing. And with a lead to start with, obviously, it's Max Max needs to, you know, not have it be just as much damage as he's dealing. It looks as though Liquid are most likely going to be taking this series and again moving through to tomorrow. As it's going to be fun. Liquid against the Shopify Rebellion. Two of the fan favorite teams fighting for a chance to play Dragon Kaizi in the next round. Clem gets it done here against Max Packs 3 0 against him on the day.